Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Now, over the years, we've seen a lot of cyber decks and other homemade portable computers. But if there's one name that stands above all the others, it's Jay Dosher. His ruggedized and mill spec Raspberry Pi computers take some beating. And to be honest, they can take a beating. But he's never been one to stand on his laurels. And we know that whenever he produces something, there'll be another one along so sooner or later to improve upon it. Now, all this work requires quite a lot of CAD work. So he's going to be taking us through his work with Tinkercad, um, both as an introduction, he's offering us an introduction, as well as a path for those who are about to outgrow it. So hello, Jay, welcome and take it away. All right. Thank you, Jenny. All right, everybody, give me a second to get my screen share going. All right. Um, and while I get this up and going, um, this is going to be an interactive session. So if you hop over into general, um, I'm actually going to be happy to um, answer questions and kind of deep dive where we need to. Uh, so we have a pretty flexible agenda. So um, first off, uh, you know, if, if you don't know, um, a cyber deck uh, came from, I believe, William Gibson movie or book, um, hopefully maybe a good movie someday. Um, but the idea is it's a computer that was used in the books to uh, connect cybernetically into uh, the pre precursor to the internet. Um, today, what that really means is a scratch built uh, computer, usually the enclosure, um, you know, a screen, USB ports, um, a many times a Raspberry Pi, even though those are getting quite expensive right now. Um, so um, what I did was I, I bought a 3D printer. I started printing out things years ago, um, just, you know, trinkets and things like that. And I started, I really struggled with slicers and all of the things. And then I started to look at options for CAD. And I looked at uh, Fusion. And the first thing that hits you with Fusion is the price tag, frankly. Um, and one thing led to another. And um, I started playing around with Tinkercad. And I could go back and maybe if we have some time, I'll actually, this is my production uh, Tinkercad account. And I can go back into the cringeworthy early things that I did that were mostly cylinders and, and things like that. I think the first functional part that I made was a uh, part for to fix a screen door. But let's, let's talk about what Tinkercad is. Tinkercad is primarily an educational tool, but part of what's fun about just hacking in general is taking something that was intended kind of for one thing and using it for something completely different. Um, we're not violating any terms of service here or anything. And in fact, uh, Tinkercad encourages and has license options to share things avail uh, freely and uh, through many uh, open source licenses. So it's cool that it's free. Um, you can protect it with multi-factor authentication. Um, and um, it's browser-based. Um, now, I like to use Tinkercad on a 4K screen. So if you're going to have a 4K monitor, you might want a fairly uh, uh, decently powerful video card to, to do that. Uh, but you can do it on a laptop if you need to or if you're more patient. Um, but it's very easy to get started. And I'm actually going to show you um, you know, Jenny actually like implied, hey, some new stuff is coming. What you see on the screen is something that I actually have parts for, um, for something that's coming out soon, and I'm going to be sharing it. And, and I, I'm trying to make them even tougher. Um, so we're going to actually take this one and we're going to take it apart. Um, but before we go and take it apart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some examples here of how this is very different from many other CAD programs. Uh, Many other CAD programs, and I'll use Fusion because that's the one that I'm starting with as a frame of reference, um, starts with a line drawing, a two-dimensional drawing. So if you were to draw something out on a piece of paper, and then you take that and you extrude it or you build up from there. Um, Tinkercad works completely different. And the only reason that's a problem is that mentally, 
you you kind of grow attached to the one that you learn. And so famously, I've said multiple times over the last couple of years, okay, I'm not going to make anything more in Tinkercad. I'm going to go over to Fusion. I'm going to go over to OpenSCAD or something. And I always come back to Tinkercad because I'm it's so familiar and um and, and I'm so comfortable with it. I can move, I can work very, very quickly in it. So I'm going to show you some things that this design has that I think are going to be helpful for people. Um, there are some things, though, that I want you to be aware of that are limitations of Tinkercad. Um, I'll tell you right now, um, if you were to send parts out uh, to get them uh, uh, CNC'd or laser cut or some of that, it, it's, it's going to be limited and you're going to have to do some extra steps uh, with your files. Um, it doesn't support uh, DXF, uh, which is common for uh, some, some machine shops, depending on what software they use for, for cutting their parts. And uh, SVG is limited. So even though I'm going to use an example here, I can actually go here. Let me move my screen and I can go export. And I can say SVG here. But guess what? There's a little bug in Tinkercad. And if I move this down, this is on the, the build area. If I was to raise this up off of the build area, and you can see a little shadow there, and I export this as an SVG, it's an empty SVG. So there's some bugs like that. And that's you kind of got to work around some of that. Um, uh, and the biggest one, the number one thing um, that you're not going to be able to do uh, with Tinkercad is generate step files. And a perfect example is I have a 3D model here. I could export this as an STL right now. In fact, I've printed a number of these. Um, but if I wanted to send this to a machine shop, maybe I wanted to make a really cool one out of aluminum, which I would love to do. I can't do it with Tinkercad. And so I have to generate what's called a step file and that's required for, uh, for milling. And so guess what? The, the challenge is, is maybe I might be able to somehow convert an STL into a step or something like that. But if I need to go and modify it, if the machine shop comes back and says, hey, this tolerance is too low, and we'll talk about tolerances in a second, and you have to move this or move that, you're now jumping through all these extra hoops. Whereas if you were using Fusion or something like that, you could generate, you could just move the, you know, move the whole reprocess, export the step file. So um, if you're planning on doing professional CNC, build in the time to learn a new tool. That said, uh, if you do, uh, if you're just going to 3D print stuff, let, let's have some fun, shall we? So um, this file is one of my, I'll tell you one, one of my secrets right now. I love to print a on a smooth bed. So the, the face, and if I flip this over, Let's see if this will flip over for me. This face is going to be on, a, on the print bed and it's going to come out nice and smooth. Or if I have a textured bed, I could get the cool textured finish. But I don't use supports and I try to make things that don't use supports. So when you're designing something, you, you want to keep that in mind. And I'll use an example. This is the frame for a cyber deck. Um, and I'm going to lower this back down. Okay. And if you look, here's my bracket. And I use these two little holes. I have a little hole there and a little hole here. And those two align it. Now, another thing that CAD programs are great for is making parts line up. If you need a hole to line up, or if you need um, a joint or a hinge or something like that, there's all these complex functionality that you can do for that. I have some tips and tricks that we're going to show on how I do it. So first off, I'm going to select both of these parts. I'm going to come up here to align. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the red part. And I'm going to click this to align it to the left. And then I'm going to click up here to align it to the top. And then I'm going to pivot down. And I'm going to align it to the top. And you can see here, it's kind of got this weird color. But if I click this green one, and I just bring it, raise it up, I've made these parts so that those holes line up. And I'm going to show you how I do that. And we'll start with this bracket. The bracket's the easy one. So you can go in, by the way, any of the stuff that's that, that I've shared on back7.co, and I point back to the Tinkercad files, 
I get many, many people that say, hey, can you send me the mechanical dot drawing for this? Or, hey, can you send me the source for this? Tinkercad's really cool. All you got to do is go in here and click ungroup. And we click on group, and what do we see? We see what's called a soft box, and then we have another soft box inside of it, and then we have another uh, a set of, uh, of cylinders. Now, each one of these cylinders has a specific size. I'm gonna talk about sizing in just a second, but this middle piece is here just to save on plastic. We could easily, um, what I like to do is instead of deleting it, I like to raise it up. We can look at it this way. So I could easily print that. I'm just going to print more plastic, and it's not going to, um, it's not going to help me it help us any. So I, I'll hit Control Z, and um, and put it back. Now, a few of these holes are um, are are for the screen mounts. So you can see those are 4.3. Um, I actually had to make these larger because I heard back, like I mentioned earlier, I heard back from a CNC shop that said, hey, uh, we can't make holes that small, make them bigger. And so I did. So these are all 4.3, 4.3 millimeters. And if you'll notice, these are 5.1. Now, if you know any of my builds, you know I love M5 screws. I love to use M5 screws. And part of it is because is I kind of have these kinds of things on speed dial. And so if you look though, why would I make a hole for an M5 screw 5.1? And it's a very simple answer. When you print, when you 3D print, even a very well calibrated printer is going to extrude a little bit out, which means the parts always going to be a little bit bigger than what you wanted. And the holes are all going to be a little bit smaller. So when I make this, I don't actually want my M5 screw catching on these holes. So I make it just ever so slightly bigger. Now, I'm going to leave that ungrouped, and the more interesting lessons come in this red part. And so I'm going to ungroup that, and boy, you see a bunch of crazy stuff. So first off, we're going to look at this hole here, and I, I'm going to ungroup that. You're going to see this one, and if I extrude this up, you're going to notice they match. This is part of how I do parts. So if I wanted to actually make another one of these, I could actually bring it in and I'm going to lower it down a little bit. And again, align it with this one. And we'll make it a little easier to, uh, we'll make it a different color here. We'll make it a nice pink. And again, I'm going to hold down my shift and select both things and then go to align. Oops. Ooh. Undo. I'm going to hold that and that one and align. And I want, I don't want this bottom one to move. So I'm going to click the yellow. And now you notice the pink part. So now uh, in Tinkercad, I literally can control C, control V and bring up. And so now I have, and I'll make it orange so it's easy to see. I'm going to zoom in here and I can actually then center it based on this bottom one. Select it, move it up, and I'm going to change it from orange to a hole, and I'm multi-select the pink part, and now I'm going to group them together. Now I have a hole that lines up with the part below it. So it can be a little tedious, can be a little bit messy, um, and it's time-consuming, sure, but you can easily make parts that line up, like brackets. So now what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to get rid of that bracket. We don't need it with what we're going to do next. So now you can see I've got the base. You can see I've got um, I've got the hole for the screen. And I'll tell you, uh, if you are looking at making parts and if you don't have them already, uh, just for handy reference, a metric, uh, I use a just a cloth tape measure uh, for big stuff just to get rough part size. And then calipers. You get cheap ones. I think they're 20, 25 bucks on Amazon. And measure, 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 measure. And test print and test print. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So we've only got a few minutes left. So I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit faster. But if you look, 
you can see I've got everything kind of grouped together. So here's the jack for the ethernet. And I know, hey, there's my M3 screw, but notice I've got it at 3.5. I know from experience, the ethernet brackets or the ethernet ports or jacks that, that I buy don't have great tolerance. And they got a little nut that kind of floats in there a lot. So I've made that hole just a little bit bigger, but I can take this piece, this piece, and this piece, and I can literally group them together. So now I can take those and I can move those wherever I want in my project. So, um, so that's like an ethernet jack. It makes it really easy for me just to go through and reuse one uh, you know, on future projects. Um, here's another one of my favorites, actually. This is a more recent one. And we're gonna move it out so it's a little easier. Oops. Control Z here. Yep. So let's see. Yep. Okay. All right. So thank you, Jenny. Um, so if we ungroup this, if you look, this is a notch um, for the USB C power. And if I group this together, and now this is going to require a little bit of mental gymnastics, but bear with me. So the hole that I know that it needs for the jack is 15.5 millimeters by 15.5 millimeters, but it's got a flat side to it. And that fly, flat side keeps it from twisting. It also makes it aesthetically a little cooler because, um, well, frankly, it, it makes it so the USB-C port always kind of lines up one way or the other. But it would be a really complicated thing to go through sometimes and create some custom grouping or something. In fact, but in fact, it's actually uh, pretty easy. So I start off with my cylinder and notice it's not a hole. And here's my flat side that I know happens to be, um, happens to be 1.1 um, millimeters. And I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna group them together. So now I have my flat side cylinder and then I can change this from a solid to a hole. And then I can actually stretch it out and make it as big as I want for grabbing on. I can move it around. So, um, and if you look, you know, you heard the expression kind of turtles all the way down. This is one, this is groupings all the way down. So if we go and take this apart, what you're going to see, if we take this and ungroup it, it's more rounded rectangles. We've got some trickery up here, but it's a, I've, it's a pretty simple part. So um, that's, that's kind of, I would say some of the basics on what you can make. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I'm gonna use one more example. And this is one that I actually have the prop and it's actually finished and printed. And that one is this one, I call it, uh, the next generation camera, and I've got a V2 on here for myself. And if you look, if I ungroup each one of these, you're going to see multiple cylinders, but you're going to see they're at different heights. And you're going to see kind of little steps inside of each one. And that's for these little things right here. And I'll hold one up to the webcam. These are threaded inserts. Now, normally on many, many of my decks, um, I will, for an M5 screw, I'll make the hole 4.8 millimeters wide and I'll just pressure fit the screw in. And if it's just getting assembled once, um, I think a, 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 um, I think a popular YouTuber went and did a bunch of stress testing on thread, you know, threaded inserts versus pressure fit. And they're basically about the same strength. Um, but the pressure fit ones, you can, you can strip the threads, you can wear them out and stuff like that. Um, but I wanted to make something to hold the next generation uh, Raspberry Pi camera. Um, I have one. I need to experiment with it. It's kind of heavy and kind of ungainly by itself. And I wanted something that would hold a Raspberry Pi and the camera. And I wanted something where I could attach and detach different things to it because I wanted to kind of create one unit. And all of these parts are essentially it. Now, this part up here, I haven't made yet. But I'll hold up here and show you, this is what it looks like assembled. And each one 
each one of those holes has a pressure fit in there. Or sorry, not a pressure fit, has a threaded insert in each one. And so threaded inserts are probably not something I would consider beginner, but they're not that hard. You can get uh, soldering tips for, uh, for the um, threaded inserts on Amazon. I think it's like 20 bucks for a set of five. And that includes like M5 and M3, which are an M and even a little tiny M2.5 one. So I think from there, I'm going to hop over and I'm going to take a look at the questions in the, um, I'm going to look in both the general chat, but if you have questions, feel free to jump into the remoticon questions. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Feel free to tag me. I'm in there as back seven at B-A-C-K, the number seven, but I'd be happy to go in and take a look and answer any questions that you might have about Tinkercad. While I'm looking for folks to ask questions, I will go into the gallery here, be a little brave and go back into the very first, let's see, we have 31. You can see me printing out toys. You can see camera, camera supports, solar receptor. You can see me starting with different kinds of pieces. So I see a lot of, I see, and, and I have a lot of hacker friends that talk about OpenSCAD. Um, I would say if you want open, if you want a uh, uh, long-term kind of support, you want, you want something that's free, you want something that works offline, uh, it's, it's pretty much gotta be OpenSCAD. Um, uh, Tinkercad does require internet and does require, um, you know, an Autodesk account. Uh, Fusion, uh, can work offline for a little while, uh, but um, does essentially need online access. The one thing that I would also add is that you really want to make sure um, that you're thinking about what it is you're trying to do. Um, so if we go in and look, um, Part of what I used Tinkercad for was learning. Uh, was learning about different aspects of design, um, you know, making different brackets. Um, I see Elliot's mentioning FreeCAD. I'm not familiar with FreeCAD, but but definitely um, think about think about and make um, think about what like be intentional about your use of the platform. Um, um, yeah, and I see a question from Kevin. Am I worried about um, them charging for Tinkercad at some point? Um, I'm not particularly worried, frankly. Um, this is a great educational tool uh, for individuals and they really are focused on getting, and this is, frankly, it is designed for children. So if we go into the, the different shape galleries, they've got a lot of stuff in there for kids. Um, I'm not worried about them charging for Tinkercad. Um, but again, um, a lot of the designs that are in here um, aren't really portable to other systems. So I could take an STL um, out of Tinkercad and into another CAD program, but I'd still have to reverse engineer them. So that's the thing that you have to keep in mind is that um, it is free, it is easy to use, but longer term, you wanna be definitely be looking at other platforms. All righty, let's see. I think we got one other question. Um, uh, so Mercer Pencil asks, why did I get into making? Um, well, I started the back, I've, I've been making stuff for, for quite a while. I would say earliest uh, for me has been woodworking in high school. Um, and it's very satisfying to have an idea uh, and, and, and bring, it, bring it into the world. I think it's, it, it's, a, it's immensely rewarding to do that. Um, I would say um, I would say I started back seven stuff after uh, doing a class with Jimmy Duresta out in upstate New York, where I did uh, blacksmithing and I did axe making, neither of which are realistic for me here in Southern California. Uh, but I learned uh, you can focus your energy um, and focus on the things that, that you're passionate about and um, 
and and that's part of what this is. Um, as with Cyberdex, I made the first one, and in fact, you can see it. It's hiding. It's sitting right there on my desk behind me. Um, that's the first one I made. I think um, that's the Raspberry Pi recovery kit. Um, I made that before I knew what Cyberdex were. So I found the community after I made that, um, and I still love making them. And um, you know, I, I make the plants freely available. I also sell them. And there's just so many different stories that I see. People tag me on Instagram all the time of things that they've made them for. Ham radio geeks use them. People use them for direction finding, off-grid computers, all kinds of stuff. So um, yeah, so uh, uh, NA, I think if I'm getting your name right, um, what's my strategy for multi-component projects and parts? We're almost out of time, but let me show you an example of one that I'm working on right now. And the, the really what it comes down to is making stuff line up and, and making stuff fit. Um, and what I will do is I will do test prints. And so um, here's an example of one that I'm working on right now. And if I take this file, this yellow file, and actually if I reach under my desk, I actually have a test print of that file. So I test print, I make sure that it fits within the enclosure or the space, and then I start printing. I don't often do, I, I rarely do uh, top infill, I mean, you know, top layers and things like that just because I don't need it. I just need to make sure the shape is right, just need it to be rigid. Um, that's part of the challenge is making some of these more complex things. I kind of bump my head up against the limitations of Tinkercad. Uh, and I, I will need to I will need to to move to another platform soon. Um, I would say what I the dim I see you asked the question. Uh, would I say that that uh, planning builds and Tinkercad is still worth it if you're not into three D printing? Um, yes, um, just for for fit. Um, if so, perfect example. Um, I'm not a visual, I'm not a, a mental three, uh, a 3D person. I know what I think looks good and I can see it on the screen and I can say, yep, that's what I want. But if you ask me to visualize the clearance on one of my uh, cyber decks of the USB ports and the Raspberry Pi and the display and the bolts, I can't do it in my head. So I rely on um, a combination of CAD and the actual physical model. Now, if I had a, a more kind of professional CAD setup, I'd have 3D models for all of my parts. Like you can actually import like an, a Raspberry Pi and you can make 3D models for all of your stuff. And then you could just do it all in CAD. In fact, professional CAD folks, that's what they do. They have all of the components where I kind of get this close, kind of visualize it, throw it together. So this is, this is not a professional setup. And so in a yes, you can, you can, um, so real quick here, because I think we're almost out of time. If I go and collect the export, it will do everything in the design, which is like an unusable file. Or I can go in and click an individual file and click export, and I can export as an OBJ or a GLTF or an STL. And so, yes, you can do them one at a time. All righty. Um, so uh, a couple things that I would make sure to do, if you're interested in Cyberdex, you can either follow me uh, on Instagram. I'm kind of just there now. I'm not really anywhere else at back7.co. Um, you can uh, message me here and I can either provide a link for uh, the Cyberdex Discord, which is a fantastic Discord server. Um, you know, I kind of, the one putting stuff in Pelican cases, um, but there's so many other designs out there. Uh, but hit me up, I'm on Discord um, and happy to help.